Namaste, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to see you and uh, to be here with you on this Wednesday. So we almost finished the first week, so that's very good. We're going to check about the platform as usual. So this is the class of tonight. It has two different names. I don't know why it's a mistake, but of course, it is use of capital letters. And uh, the exercise we need to be finishing is going to be 1.5. So you need to correct the mistakes. Remember that when we do exercises like this, so that you have to type, um, it's very important for us to be careful about punctuation, uh, the final period, uh, question marks. Well, here we don't have question marks, but anyways, any space, anything like that is going to cause the exercise to be wrong. So let's be careful on that one. Any by any chance there is a problem, just let me know so I can report it. Okay. Now we're gonna check about the attendance. So Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Teacher present. I'm Ana, Ana Claudia González. Sorry, oh, I'm late. Perfect. Okay, don't worry. Thank you. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. And Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay. We're going to start then. Teacher, I'm here present. Sorry. Okay. Perfect. We're going to check. Okay. And yeah. also, Francis. Thank you. Here. Okay. Very well. Let me check something else. Okay, good. All right. So, we're going to continue with the book. And here we go. So, how to use capital letters, part one. Remember that we are getting ready for us to, to write an essay, right? And things like that one. So, this topic sometimes we might believe is not important, but yes, they are. And I mean, in English, they really, really care about this kind of thing. So, it's very important for us to check into it. Uh, let's see then. We're going to read. Uh, let's see who can help me reading. Juan Miguel Brand, could you please help me reading the chart? Okay, sure. Uh, unit one, number eight, how to use capital letters, part one. Look at the examples in the box, then complete the practice below. Capital letters are used in a variety of contexts in English. Knowing when to apply them will add more professionalism to your writing. Number one, use an initial capital letter for the first word of a sentence. Although many entrepreneurs come up with brilliant business ideas, they fail to sell their ideas when looking for fi financing. Yeah, financing, yeah? Yep. Okay. Number two. Use an initial capital letter for proper names, people, organization, brand names, eh, e.g. Apple computer, Android system, 
clinics, but iPhone and eBay. I, I think they, there is a exception, yeah? Yeah, those are exceptions because the name of the brands are like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, the example is Daniel Eisenberg, the author of Workless, Impossible and Stupid, recently debunked the myth that entrepreneurs need to be innovative. Number three, use a capital letter for the pronoun, pronoun I. And the example is, the most valuable, valuable piece of advice I received when I started my business was to focus on one thing at a time, at the time. Okay, very good, Pastor, thank you. So yes, this is uh, maybe the ones that we know already, right? So I believe there is no good thing on this one. So, uh, so capital letters are used in a variety of contexts in English. Knowing when to apply them will add more professionalism to your writing. So definitely, the first one is something very common, right? Initial capital letter for the first word of a sentence. So every time that you have a period and or that you are starting a sentence then we need to start that with a capital letter. So although many entrepreneurs come up with brilliant business ideas, they fail to sell their ideas when looking for finance. Good. I guess that is clear. Number two, use an initial capital letter for proper names, people, organizations, brand names, etc. Example given, Apple computer, Android system, Kleenex. So as you were mentioning, iPhone and eBay is not like that because that is the way they uh, use the name of the company, the brand of the company. So uh, those are the exceptions because they they made it that way, okay? So, and then it's Danny Eisenberg, the author of Worthless, Impossible and Stupid, recently debunked the myth that entrepreneurs need to be in that group. And on the number three it says, use a capital letter for the pronoun I. So that is something that we also know, right? From the very beginning, when we start English classes, we know that every time that you are going to use I as a pronoun, then definitely you have to use that in the capital. So the most valuable piece of advice I received when I started my business was to focus on one thing at a time. Oh, that is a very good advice. Okay, very good, perfect. So do you have any questions about these grammars? Not for me. Questions. Good, perfect. Um, Talking just... about the pronoun, only I or all of them? Just I. I will be the, the one I. that will. Yeah. Okay. Good, perfect. Uh, just to have a question for you then. What is the bound? Uh, I didn't know the word, but I think it's something like uh, revoke or yes. uh, without uh, uh, effect. On is no mm -hmm. more acceptable. Mm -hmm. Very good. So something that you research and then you know what is the truth about that one. So uh, you. Okay know that now is a myth because it's not it's not true right so that will do it good good perfect so um then we're going to do the exercise nine uh, there is a paragraph here it says the excerpt below about an entrepreneurial myth features 10 mistakes related to the use of capital letters presented in the box above so what we're going to do is to correct the mistakes and compare okay I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check into that one and tell me where are the mistakes. So you can read about it, try to understand it, and then you will be able to, to do that one. It's going to be kind of easy, but of course, I'm going to give you enough time for you to check into that one, okay?
Okay, have you finished already? Not teacher, but almost. Okay. Of course, take your time, don't worry. Okay, have you finished already? I only have eight. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it's kind of difficult, right? <laughs> then in the middle of yes. everything. Okay, I'm going to give you two more minutes and then we'll chat together. Okay.
Okay, so let's check. Let's see how it goes. Which one is the first one that you found, everybody? The pronoun? The pronoun I, I after wrong, but I. Exactly, that is the first one. So we have one already. Wrong, but I doubt facts will stop achievement of trans apple. Okay, what will be the second one? The name of Hewlett Packard. Hewlett and Packard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have two and three, right? Yes. Good. And after that? At the beginning of the sentence, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Very good. Number four. Then after the period, most. Number Not the rule, five. period. Most. Very mm -hmm. good. Perfect. Number five. And then the, the audio. audio. Okay. The uh, first, because there are two. Yeah, there Three. are two. I just, I hate it. So this is number 100 six. years old, exactly. That's, that is the number one. There are three. In there are three audio. Hydrox. Hydrox, two. No, very good. It was Hydrox. Hydrox yeah. in the same line of the first audio. Yeah, I just can't. I hate it. Okay. Yeah. This is number seven. Uh-huh. Then Oreo again. Yeah. Number and Oreo eight. again. And then Oreo again. There were nine. 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 Anybody and... found any other? Mm. Mm, let me see if I can find any other. I... <laughs> yeah, I guess those are the ones. The it, film yeah. after the uh -huh. the column, years old, after the column, everyone. Everyone. Uh, it's not I'm a rule that yes, no. This is uppercase. I uh, know that is not a rule that you are going to use uppercase. Um no, let's say that it's not it's not part of the things. Uh, I was checking and I didn't find any other. I guess there are only nine. Uh, let's see in the yeah. The topic is. Fine I was looking also on the topic, but no. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that happens, you know, sometimes there are some errors. But, anyways, now let's check some uh, vocabulary. So it says, wrong, but I doubt facts will stop achievement of SAS. What will be achievement of SAS upper class parents? <laughs> achievement of SAS is something that is a. Uh, following the success in everything they do. Obsessed, right? So they are yes. obsessed that they have to achieve that they are very competitive and things like that. And upper class parents? Upper class is not our class. It's a class higher than ours. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that may be it, yeah. <laughs> upper class parents from building replica garages for their kids play dates to instill this is an interesting word instill to put something in inside of the kids of other person mm, actually that is more like install but instill actually is something like when you establish a business for example and is gaining reputation and is gaining a position in the market for example something like that one so little by little, it's growing, something like that. Okay, May Hewlett and Packard and Jobs and what's next? Let's see. Mousetraps, what are the mousetraps? Something to capture mice, but in this case, it's something figurative, I think. Definitely, something figurative is, I mean, when, you know, since the 60s, marketing is very important, right? Because they launched something 
for to attract people so they can buy products and services. Uh, so that is like a mousetrap in this case. It's like, come here, right? Come here and buy my product, something like that. Uh, then, uh, let's see. When you say break the mold, what is that? You need to leave behind the old things or the old way to do the things and uh, create a new way a new uh, situation. Perfect. So it's to, to change something, right? To think yes. different and then come and change the way that people are doing things. So, yeah, that is good. Uh, these three words are good. Proud. They say they proud. What is proud? That is uh, proud for me. <laughs> proud. Because it's not proud, it's proud. Yeah, it's not proud, but proud. Actually, there is like produce. They produce, proud. they create something. And okay. then poke. What is poke? The dog knows the answer. To add something different? To add something different? It's not something like that. Poke is poke. like... Yeah, when you have something, you point in the right direction. So it is referring to marketing, right? So or the the sector that you are going to aim a product or brand, something like that. And push paradigms, of course, you know what is that one? Yeah, okay. Uh, what is cataclysmic? Something that definitely be break, break the rule or break the model and give a, a jump in a, a different direction, maybe. Well, in this case, it's something like that one, right? So, yeah, they, uh, they cause changes, a lot of changes on the face of the, uh, of the market, let's say. Okay? Uh, what are the Cranfield cookies? I know that you know that. <laughs> These are the, uh, in our case, in El Salvador, the Salvador, Pozuelo, <laughs> cream that there are two cookies and something in between. Yeah, so it's like cream in, in the middle, right? Actually, yes. it's filled with cream. You know, uh, uh, a lot of people, they love that one because you can open that one and eat or check what will be the, the flavor only of the cream that is very, very sweet and things now. So I yes. remember I used to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I mind that that is 100 years old. My goodness. So some things are amazing. It doesn't matter where they are. I mean, when were they created? Uh, and yeah, they believe Oreo invented it. I mean, Oreo is maybe one of the most Popular, I, right? I believe that. that I really you believe that one. Yeah, that's the first time I, I see the name Hydros. I, I didn't know what is, I don't know what is Hydro. I think yeah. it was uh, some <laughs> uh, uh, factory, but. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, the Hydrox was the name of uh, that company that created this kind of. Cookies. In my, uh, my, this is very interesting because there are two different um, things, right? The first one is that Hydrox, they, somebody there in the company said, why don't we create a cookie that is filled with cream? I mean, imagine a chocolate cookie with cream in the middle of it. And I don't know if he was or she has to fight against a lot of things because sometimes people don't believe in ideas. It's like, no, that is not going to work. I mean, there was a big process in the company. So they convinced that they this was a good idea. They created the marketing, they launched the cookie, and maybe it was successful. So that is the first part, right? The second one is the marketing that Oreo made. I mean, he they did not create the cookie, but they took something, and we were saying that one, right? So sometimes entrepreneurism entrepreneurship is not only to create something new but sometimes to take something and give it added a value 
And in this case, I mean, maybe the cookie, the quality is better, maybe the price is better, but definitely the marketing is something that is going to help a lot to companies. If, if companies, they really believe and they invest in marketing, that can make a huge difference, right? That can be the difference between success and failure. So that is a very good thing. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, it says Otto was a Johnny come lately to the game. Uh, what is that? <laughs> I seen it something uh, a more so uh, uh, a phrase that is to, I understand. You say somebody arrived uh, not in the right time, but uh, do it well. Very good. So yes, it's an idiom. It's kind of a slang that you can find there in English. Uh, some of the things that happen here is that, I mean, in the classes, we speak mostly formal English, right? It's like, yeah, we're going to speak in a very regular way at a regular pace. Well, when you go to other countries, they are going to use this kind of phrases a lot. And sometimes you're lost, right? My English says, oh, that is a Johnny come lady to the game. Who's Johnny? What game? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> so... There are, there are things like that. There are situations like that. So if you are going to travel, my friends, uh, that is a very good idea to, for you to read and check about some slangs and, and idioms where, whenever you go. Uh, let's see. And some playing better recipe audio. Now, almost a page. Okay, very good. Perfect. Uh, do you have any other, any question and any other word here in this, in this part? Okay, very interesting. Uh, I really love reading some Juma C because you can find lots of new words, now, new vocabulary and new phrases. And besides that one, you learn something. So that's what I really love. And that's why I bring a lot of readings. Um, we're not going to do this part, but we're going to continue with the presentation. So let's continue speaking about entrepreneurship. Remember that by Friday, I'm going to listen to your ideas, real or unreal. You are going to pitch uh, your ideas for entrepreneurs, and then uh, we're going to evaluate if the idea was good, if it's uh, interesting, if you will buy that one. Maybe that is the, the thing that we can do. I mean, I will buy that one. So, of course, maybe you can bring a little pricing estimate. So, of course, it's not true, but it's a, it's a very good idea. So we're going to discuss about four types of entrepreneurship. Uh, let's see. Anna Claudia, could you please help me reading this first slide? Of course, sorry. I couldn't unmute. Uh -huh. uh, four types of entrepreneurship. Is that the way how? Yeah, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Entrepreneurship. Okay. As there are different types of entrepreneurs, there are also different types of businesses they create. Below are the main different types of entrepreneurship, small business. Small businesses, entrepreneurship is the idea of opening a business without turning it into a large conglomerate or opening many chains. A single location restaurant, one grocery shop, or a retail shop to sell your handmade goods will all be an example of small businesses entrepreneurship. These individuals usually invest their own money and succeed if their business turns a profit, which they leave off of. They don't have outside investor and will only take a loan if it helps continue the business. Very good, perfect. So in your own words, what did you get in this? Yeah, I guess that is what we see in most of the, in our country, for example, that is what we see a lot of, this would be like the startup, mm -hmm. startup because people invest in their money or they quit from their job. And as the law here in this country, it covers you if you have more than two years working, you receive like a kind of bonus. 
And so people invested in to create mostly sell goods handmade by their own. So they, you can see, for example, stores that they just sell online. I purchased now with pandemic, a lot of things that they just sell online. They do delivery around the country. You can find pillows and you can find uh, whatever you want, either uh, the clothes uh, for the costumes for your cats and dogs. You yeah. can find whatever you, you want. And I guess using together the social media on in a positive way for for their own business, that is how they succeed. Of course, even though in the in the media, in the social media, the now there is another type, or I don't know if you call it kind of competitors, people that is uh, they steal uh, designs or names or ideas from others, uh, entrepreneurs. That is something that I, I saw. And in, in if the, the first entrepreneur uh, putting the, the, the startup, the idea uh, in to work, if they don't cover their idea or products uh, with the law, like uh, I, I, as far as I understand, you can register your design, your mark, a book, whatever you create, whatever is your own, you can have like a, a license, register, I don't know how to name it. And, mm -hmm. and that is what sometimes happens that people, they don't investigate all of this type of topic and suddenly uh, comes up another entrepreneur that is I don't know if smarter or I don't know is taking advantage of the knowledge they have and that is how they steal uh, good ideas uh, like the, the case we were in, uh, looking uh, looking at about the audios oh yeah that definitely happens so huh? Yes, mm -hmm. and you are so right. I mean, I believe in El Salvador, this is the most common, right? So, uh, yeah, even if you are going to open a restaurant or you are going to sell clothes or if you are going to create a product, a handmade or craft, I mean, uh, that is the most common. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very rare that a company comes and says, I'm going to open 16 branches. No, right, so that... Uh, no, it's that... just one, and it's okay if I just have one. Mm -hmm. That, that will be it. I'm so sorry you are so right. I'm sorry? But one uh, proof of that is, I don't know if you are, uh, I, I don't know, if, have you tried Bonanza Chicken? Oh. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very famous. Yeah, that is a really example of this, a small business, mm -hmm. because they don't have any other, uh, um, any other uh, location to, to buy it. Just in that one. But you know what? Here, for example, in Santa Ana, there are other, uh, I how do you say, empresarios? Uh, how do you? Entrepreneurs, you can say. Same. The same, yeah. ah, okay. There are other entrepreneurs. They are very established here. They, they, are, they have a lot of branches of different products. They, they, the main line for them is, is cheese. Uh, uh, all the products coming from the, from the cow, I don't know how to say lactose. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and you Baby know what? Products. These entrepreneurs here, they have a lot of money. Do you know what they did? They invest and they purchase the same machinery that these men from the Bonanza had, and they sell the same, exactly the same uh, type of chicken. And here in Santa Ana, it's named Back Pollo. It's the yeah. same. Back same. Pollo. Yeah, Back Pollo. Yeah. Uh, coming from uh, cool. BAC, Baca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I, know, I I had the opportunity to talk once with one of the owners, and, and that is why they name it in that way, Back Boil, because their main product comes from the cow. Mm. All right. Mm. Oh, cool, cool. That's pretty good to know. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so how, when, whenever you want you? to come here to Santana, you won't yeah. meet. You, you don't miss, you won't miss Bonanza chicken. You can find it. <laughs> in the same exactly sign, the same exact 
flavor, but also the 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 potatoes, the same, the sauces, it's all it's the same. Oh, that is interesting. Uh, to be honest with you, I have seen that one. I know where it's it, but I I have it. I haven't tried that. So now oh, really? I have to go and try. So yeah, also prepare, you right? can uh, you, you can look them in Pedido Ya. <laughs> ah, okay, <mine. laughs> uh <-huh. Cool. laughs> It's delicious. But, nice. Uh, actually, speaking about that one, I was going to ask you. I mean, there are a lot of companies that are kind of this. One. I mean, small companies that are successful. That like they started very small and then. <laughs> Uh, continue growing but they didn't go and create a conglomerate so uh, which one do you recommend which one do you know that are very good products so now we have for example bonanza uh, and the uh, back pollo so what mm -hmm. other businesses do you know that you say oh that is a very good thing you know it's very small but it's very nice and mm -hmm. the products and what other things do you know <laughs> uh, mario pizza too uh, oh, mario near pizza. to the yeah, it's near to the to the Paseo del Carmen. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. live here nearby, so I, I have to go and try it. I have never tried oh, it. Okay, you know. And what about Zimmerdown or Inayamin here in Santana? That is a very popular, yeah. They're kind of the same as I as I know because I used to play for for them when, when we had the band you know, in the beginning. Ah. Uh, they were the owners of the trench town all together. Mm. But they say that they uh uh, the gangsters, you know, they came and they uh, ask money and then they say, uh, we're going to sell some drugs here. And they say, no, we cannot do that. One. And they close it, but they took part of it and they created different. So mm -hmm. uh, they created Ian Jamin, the Simmer Down, and another person made the other one that is in the past. So uh, mm -hmm. very popular. That that yeah. food, I mean, very nice. I, I like their pizzas. They have a complete right. menu. That's right. Yeah. What other what other companies do you know have you visited in that kind of line? Small business, Me? entrepreneurship, everybody. Ah. Anybody wants to share? To recommend. Me a pizza in the I have tried that one. It's a very good one, yeah. And they have a yeah, very, I mean, the flavor is very nice and the price is very good. So nice. Yeah, I, I guess that they have just one place, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. It's just one place. The good thing is that they deliver. So, but it's a, it's a very good thing. Yeah. Any other? Okay. Let's move on then. So the other one is a scalable startup. Let's see. It's going to help me within um, Dora Elizabeth. A scalable startup. These are companies that start with a unique idea. Think Silicon Valley. They, they, they hope are to innovate with a unique product or service and continue growing the company. Continually scaling up as time move, moves on. This type of company often requires investors and large amounts of capital to grow their idea and reach multiple markets. Okay, on your own words, Dora, what did you understand on these ones? And when, uh, uh, Companies have, uh, for example, a only product, and this product is a uh, is a successful in ground with the the this the company with this this product or or service. Okay, yeah, something like that one. So uh, this is a scalable startup because from the very beginning. When these people, they create this company, they want to scale. I mean, they know that they are going to start small, probably. Uh, but the idea is to scale. I mean, in technology, this is very, very common. I mean, if you create an application or a software, uh, you want that to be uh, sold to a lot of companies or people. So 
that is the main idea of any of these kind of things. So sometimes, depending on certain things and depending on where it's created in the U.S., it's very common that they are looking for investors. Uh, in the U.S., there are people that they have a lot of money and they are looking to multiply that money. Uh, they look for people that sh share ideas that are very good ideas that are profitable. And then if they are convinced, they say, okay, I'm going to give you this amount of money and then you can move on, right? So that happens. That happens on Facebook, of course. It's a very good example on that one. It was created, I mean, in, as a joke that in uh, uh, like a testing, you know, and then when every, everything was working fine and um, the server were running very good, they looked for investors and then they launched that one. So, and now he has, I mean, he's the owner of Instagram and, and WhatsApp right now. It's a, it's a monster. So that is the dream of all these kind of companies. Not all of them get to do something like that. Uh, but I mean, there are lots of, for example, applications that you can download for many things. Uh, and I mean, sometimes it's kind of interesting how people get ideas so they can try to get a lot of money out of that. So very good. Good, good. Uh, do you know any companies like that? Any other examples from scalable startups? Maybe this uh, bread from Santana, Bam Bam. Well, that is a very good example. Maybe that company did not start like the with the idea to grow up, but since it, since it was very successful, um, I mean, they started with branches in Santa Ana, and then they started uh, in other departments, right? So that is something that scaled definitely, and they continue growing up. So. Very good. Anybody else have any other example on this? No worries. Let's continue then. Large company. Um, you sell. Okay, teacher. Large company. Large company entrepreneurship is a new business division created within an existing company. The existing company may be well placed to branch out into the into other sectors, or it may be well placed to become involved in new technology. CEOs of these companies either for is for is for is. Either for his, what is for his teacher? Okay, that is a good question. Anybody, do you remember, do you know what is for C? Something to see in the future. Exactly, something that, I mean, you have the vision that this is going mm. to be in the future in a different position. Okay, thank you. For C, a new market for the company or individuals within the company generate ideas that they bring to senior management to start the process. Perfect. In your own words, what do you get in this? Mm. That it's like a large companies are like um like a division of a an already exist ex, already uh, for a company that already exists. I think that I have a company and it's settled. And the like the large company maybe is the the other division of this company that is like the like the I don't know, like the like the mother company or or like something like that. And mm -mm, the idea is to to mm, mm, 
I know the chair. I understand that that is a company that is that like kind of division of a a company that already exists. But yeah, just that I don't know if you could help me to understand better this. Definitely, actually, that is the main idea. The main idea is that there is a company, uh, and that company, I mean, somebody come and says, uh, you know, uh, since we do this kind of products. Uh, there is a, another product that is related to, uh, but it's a different product that we can launch. And they say, oh, okay, let's create a new division and we're going to launch this new product that is going to be part of our company, but it's going to be handled by a different a name, different things like that one. So uh, that happens. That happens a lot mostly in countries like the US that they uh, see a new market for new products and then they just, within the company create a secondary company, let's say. Some companies actually, they have a lot of divisions. So that is sometimes very, very common, okay? So this is like, what can I say? A caterpillar, right? Caterpillar is like, it was at the very beginning about trucks and about uh, industry, um, vehicles and machinery and things like that one. Now they sell shoes because they saw that their shoes were very popular and they created issues because they are uh, workers, they needed working shoes. So but then they say, hey, everybody's looking for these shoes. Let's create another another division so uh, we can sell this kind of shoes. And now they sell shoes a lot, maybe more than, than the trucks. So uh, that is a good example of that one. Okay, thank you. Very good, perfect. So, uh, anybody has any other example about these kind of companies? Yeah, Thank teacher, you. maybe in maybe El Salvador, uh, there was a Siman company. They seen that they were building many many builds, a big building in buildings, and uh, they create uh, a, a branch that uh, working in that field and uh, they have another field like uh, insurance and a uh, bank and they were they create many brands that all of the same family that is true so there are many companies like that one any other example somebody was going to say something in other is in the when, uh, in, for example, Grupo Q. Yeah. Grupo, Grupo in, the, in the Salvador, the, the first name is Grupo. Mm -hmm. And the second is the, is the price uh, cover the other mark. That is true. There are some uh, conglomerates that are so huge that they, I mean, they have different departments, they have different uh, divisions that are going to provide different services, but they are within the same company. I mean, the profit is for the same conglomerate, the same uh, company that is the huge one. And then, but I mean, the other companies, they have their own resources. Um, I get, I believe that Juan Miguel Brown was going to say something. Yeah, teacher. Uh, I was thinking about the uh, Pollo Campero with Don Pollo. Yeah. Uh, they have a, a, a huge, maybe if this is correct to say, a huge cash flow. So they have they they have to to invest in another branch, and that is Don Pollo. And Don Pollo is uh another kind of product yeah another branch with a with another name but at the end he, the owners are Pollo Campero and also they have uh, many many companies related with Pollo Campero that are uh, related maybe if we can say that uh, with um Bienes y raíces. Yeah, that is like mortgages or um, real estate. Yeah, real estate. 
Uh -huh. In another branch of that kind of company are those um, like cut the credit or something like this, but are uh, like a uh, uh, like uh, the credit or something like this be because of the uh, the huge cash flow that they have so they they buy to to the providers but uh, they, they buy now but they pay you uh, after 90 days yeah so uh, maybe you can uh, return your investment in a few days, yeah. But uh, you have this this amount, this this amount of money, and you can invest in another and in another, and many other situations or uh, startups, entrepreneurships, or whatever. And I I think this is a good example, yeah. Because they 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 had another name, yeah, and at the end is the almost the same product, yeah. Maybe the quality is a little low, but uh, the product is almost the same, yeah. Very good. So that is a very good example. I mean, that happens. I mean, sometimes. They say, uh, I mean, there is a market for people that want to pay less. I mean, we have this kind of nice restaurant with this product that people really love. But sometimes we know that there are people that they can't pay for this one. We can give something different. And one of the uh, characteristics of the Pollo is that they look for small places, right? You cannot eat there. I mean, it's for you to take it, right? You go to your house yeah. and eat at your home or delivery maybe, uh, but there are some characteristics that makes uh, the cost to be not that high, so you can give a very nice price. And you are right, maybe the quality is not that good, but then uh, the value that they added is the price. So some people, they prefer uh, to pay less, even though the quality is not the same. Well, the company, oh, sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Jose. And maybe another example could be the Pedidos Ya or maybe Uber. They have another branches, for example, Uber Eats, or maybe the Pedidos Ya that they have another um, maybe branch, not only for deliver the food but also for deliver groceries or medicines, drug, uh, drug stores or something like this, yeah. Uh, this will be another, another good example, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely, so that happens. So, and this is very, very common, you know, uh, companies, they want to invest money. So they, as you say, they have a money array and they say, what can I do with this one? We're going to invest and multiply the money and then have more money, right? So that is a, that is the trick there. So that would be it. Uh, Jose Wilfredo, you were going to say something. Uh, yeah, teacher. Uh, just one uh, company like that is maybe Siman, because Siman uh, has a lot of the uh, a lot of department to different kind of clothes and uh, a white line um. A, a lot of things and also has a market market construction and mm -hmm. they have a equipment to to build a, a lot of buildings or it, whatever what you want to build so maybe that is another a large company definitely so that's what they do as i was uh we were discussing so whenever you have a lot of money, right? So the profits are very nice. Uh, there are many reasons why a company, they do that, multiply the money and they get more profit, definitely something. Another thing is that the more profit that you get, uh, and if you have the money there, you have to pay taxes, right? So they don't like that. So they invest money that is better for them in many ways. 
And yeah, I mean, Simon also has uh, the add value that they have is the reputation, right? So, I mean, if you go to Simon, it, it's supposed that everything that you're going to buy there is going to be high quality. That's why the prices are very high. That is the opposite, right? So uh, the opposite in Simon, because I'm sure that you can find in other places, let's say in 40 bucks, there sometimes is 90, $120. So their reputation is something that they sell. So that is another value that they add. Good, perfect, nice. So let's go to the next one. The next one says, oh, well, this is how to become an entrepreneur. So this is a little bit different. Let's see, it's going to read, who hasn't read? Let's see, Jose Marcos. Okay, how to become an entrepreneur. After retiring her professional, then she showed Judy Shepard Nichols became an entrepreneur by teaching a dance class in Sydney in order to earn some extra money. If she soon learned that women who came to the studio were less inter interested in learning the side steps than they were in using the way and toning up. Shepa Richard then tried trying to transfer to teach her from him to the classes. Uh, their suicide was born. After his view followed. Today the company has more than the three thousand three hundred applications worldwide. Following an ice cream making correspondence course. The entrepreneur Jerry Brinson and then told him there a thousand seven weeks are uh, were closing long. Liz and Burlington BT, a station and purchase equipment to create uniquely flavorized cream for a local market. They spent a very fall in a million in more revenue. Perfect. Thank you very much. So these are two uh, examples on how people become an entrepreneur. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you're sitting down, right, watching TV, and then you realize about something. That happens to me. And then I say, oh, my goodness, this is a good idea. I mean, sometimes I start researching. But then again, right, uh, the most common is that we say, mm, well, I have to invest this amount of money and things and that one. So I don't do anything. But that happens. I mean, in my, these two examples, after retiring her professional dancing shoes, Judy Shepard Misset became an entrepreneur by teaching a dance class to civilians in order to earn some extra cash. So she was a professional dancer, uh, but she got retired. And then she said, well, what would I do? I mean, I have a lot of time and I can dance, so I can teach people. But then uh, she soon learned that women who came to her studio were less interested in learning precise steps than they were in losing weight and turning up. So then she realized about something, right? So she said, mm, I have to change my business. So that is something that the business they have to do. So you become successful. You need to, to think, mm, I need to change the, uh, the way I'm doing things right now. And that's what she did. Uh, she trained instructors to teach the routine and then uh, to the masses right so it was like a scaling thing and uh, this is a, a very large company jazzercist so it's about jazz but with exercise and now she has a franchise i mean uh, it's like 8300 locations worldwide i mean sometimes a little thing that you do that you add the value that you innovate is going to give you the uh, the purpose in that one. And also, I mean, franchises, are, this is something amazing, right? With franchises, you don't have to invest. I mean, do you remember? I guess that we discussed that one. How do franchises work? Do you remember that? Anybody? What, teacher? Do you remember how a franchise works? A franchise work when the, you buy or you pay uh, an amount, a fee, to the owner of the 
company and they give you the product or the recipe for the product, the, maybe the building, maybe the furniture, and you can uh, operate under the name of them. So that is a franchise. Very good, perfect. Thank you, David. For, for example, Subway, that could be a, an example mm -hmm. of franchise. Definitely, Subway is something like that one, right? So it's a very interesting thing. I mean, in my end, that you create something that is very nice and you say, I would like to have a branch in India, for example, but I won't invest my money in that one. So what you do is you sell your franchise. You say to people, okay, if you are willing to pay, I'm going to give you the recipe, as you say, David, uh, the way that you need to do things and you can use the name of my company. So what we will do is we are going to work together. I'm going to provide you everything so you work uh, in the product or services with the same quality as we do here. Uh, and you will be able to earn, I mean, your own money. So you just sell that one. You just train people and uh, do some quality reviews. And that's it. You have your money there. So that is, I mean, who created that one? That is a very good idea, franchise. Okay. The second example is also very interesting. So uh, it says following an ice cream and making correspondence course. I mean, they they took a correspondence course. So that was an email, a, a mailing, you know, course. So two entrepreneurs, Jerry Greenfield and Ben Cohen, paired eight thousand dollars in savings with four thousand dollars. So twelve thousand, twelve hundred dollars. Uh, and they created this huge uh, company. Of course, at the beginning, it was a small one. But then, I mean, now these are huge. And that happens. I mean, sometimes if you go on the street, you see uh, ice cream stores, you see burger stores, you see uh, a lot of things. And they started like this with an idea on creating something so you can provide uh, a good service and product and create uh, I mean, have more branches, uh, more income, a lot of money. So that is a very good thing. But of course, it's a lot of work. Uh, do you have any question on these two examples or any word, anything? Okay, let's move on. So this one is going to be for, let's see. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Eh, okay. Eh, although the self-made person has always been a popular figure in American society, entrepreneurship has gotten greatly romanticized in the last few decades. Decades. Decades, okay. Decades in the 21st century. The example of internet companies like Alphabet, formerly Google, and Meta, formerly Facebook, both of which had made their founders widely wealthy, have made people enamored with the idea of becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, unlike traditional profession, where there is often a defined path to follow, to road the, the entrepreneurship is mystifying to most. What works for one entrepreneur might not work for next and vice versa. Como se dice? Versa. Vice versa, yeah. Ah, vice versa. Let's say there are seven general steps that must, if not, not all, successful entrepreneurs have followed. Okay, the steps are the next one, but by now, what did you understand in this one? Uh, maybe we we have uh, seen the, the bulk of those companies. Uh, in my case, I remember how, how was maybe Google uh, in, uh, 14 years ago to start Facebook. Uh, all those companies uh, have been evolved uh, every year. Change the maybe the the UI of the application, the a new image, 
um, they, they always uh, has a successful with the product or maybe a new feature, a new capability. Uh, all the people use Google, use Facebook, and at the end, uh, they mention a, a very a point very important because maybe for those companies uh, works the the maybe the methodology the methodology that they used to evolve or to maybe change every every year, but that not uh, that not uh, mean that for every entrepreneur works in the same way. It's different. They have a, a, a they have a a big uh, personal equipment dedicated to the maybe the update all the the technology. What is the new marketing departments? Big marketing departments, and that is the, the that is because they are a, a big uh, big companies. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, I mean. Uh, I believe this is very, very true. I mean, nowadays we see companies like Google, like Facebook, like many other companies that are huge and people are millionaire. And uh, they, I mean, they are just, they're uh, leading the company and the seat, right? Uh, and then people believe that it's a very good idea to be an entrepreneur. It's a good idea. But if you really see the history of the company you will see that i mean it's, it takes years dedication innovation investment a lot of things for you to to be successful i mean and not all the companies are going to be billionaire i mean probably you are going to be very good and you are going to have enough money uh, a few branches but not all the companies can be like i, I don't know mcdonald's that are going to have branches around the world so that happens. People believe that just because they have an idea, they will become millionaire. And we need to be aware that that is not going to happen. Probably if you do the right things, I mean, you are going to have enough money. You are going to have uh, two or three branches. I don't know. Things like that. Uh, this is like, like before people used to dream to be a rock star, right? And they practice the guitar and they create music, but not all the people are going to be successful at that one. Some people, some bands, some musicians are going to, but not all of them. So that is a, a big problem. So that's why sometimes some entrepreneurs, the word there that I really like is mystifying. I mean, they believe that if you just have an idea and do a few things, you are going to success. I mean, that is not going to happen, definitely. You need a lot of work, a lot, a huge work to do. And that is going to take a lot of time. So you need to be patient. If you have the good ideas and you do things right, at the end, after five years, 10 years, probably you are going to be very, very successful. Good. So. The first thing that we need to do, not the first thing, but one of the most important. Let's see, Fernando Marvin is going to help us reading this. Ensure financial stability. This first step is not a strict requirement, but is definitely recommended. Why entrepreneurs have built successful businesses while being, while being less than financially flush Think of Facebook, now Meta, founder Mark Zuckerberg as a college student, starting out with an adequate cash supply and shooting a lot of funding can only help an aspiring entrepreneur. Increasing their personal runway and giving them more time to work on building a successful business, rather than worrying about making quick money. Perfect. What do you get into this? Uh, I think that, like you say, is not only entrepreneur have a uh, successful like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so you need to have a plan, and in this plan, an essential part is considered the financial part. 
because you you need a capital for for star. Definitely. So money is one of the most important things we already discussed on that one. And yeah, you need to, uh, you know, this is not only to get the capital. It says ensure financial stability. One of the biggest problems that entrepreneurs have uh, is that uh, they believe that, I mean, you are there just to make money fast. And now, if you if you focus on the product, if you are passionate about the service to the customers, if you really do things right, definitely you are going to be successful. That is going to come definitely because people is going to people are going to check about that the, the quality of the product, the pricing, the service that you provide. So, uh, yes, we need money and we need to invest money. We need to get some money and we need to make some money. But it's not it's not the most important thing. Yes, it's important because that is what we want to make. But if you're passionate about the idea, yesterday we were checking about that one. Being an entrepreneur is more like innovate to um to solve a problem, to fulfill a need. That is entrepreneurship. Of course, money is involved and you are there to, to gain some money, right? Do you have any questions here? Okay. Let's well, move on. Uh -huh, I'm sorry. Could well, you repeat the question, teacher? Yeah. Do you have questions? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. The next, the next one is going to be for Jose Osmin. Are you there? Yes. Okay, much has been discussed about whether going to college is necessary, necessary to become a successful entrepreneur. Many famous entrepreneurs are famous for having dropped out of the college. Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, and Larry Ellison, to many a few. So, how going to college is not necessary to build a successful business. It can it can teach young individuals a lot of a lot about the world in many other ways. And this famous college drop off are exceptions rather than for now. College may not be a, a for everyone, and the choice is personal. But it's something to think about, especially with the high price tag of the college education in U.S. Uh, it is not true that majoring in entrepreneurship is necessary to start a business. People that have built successful businesses have uh, had majored. Is, is that right? Major. Major, majored in many different subjects and doing so can open your eyes to a different way of thinking that can help you in establishing your business. Your business, sorry. Good. What do you get from this one? So I think that it's not necessary to like to become a, a successful entrepreneur to be like a, in a college or like preparing like life with education. So it's like just what a good idea, like Mark Zuckerberg so that he couldn't like reach the, the college, right? Completed, I think. So that he, he started an idea and actually that idea come up so to a, like a virtual like a business so that it can help a lot of people okay very good so yeah this is interesting i mean yeah uh, i believe people admire steve jobs mark zuckerberg uh do you know who larry ellison is no, no. Not... 
you can research and tell me who is Larry Ellison. I don't know, teacher. Okay. The owner of Oracle? I he is know. the founder and owner of Oracle. <laughs> and he did not finish school. So, college, I mean. So, uh, yes, I mean, this happens, but it's not that often. Um, maybe the question, and this is a question for you. Why do you believe these people, like Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, and Larry Ellison, they succeeded, even though uh, they didn't finish the university. Why do you believe that happened? The question is generated about is entrepreneur born or made. <laughs> Very good. So yeah, we can dis discuss about that one. You, I mean, do you believe that entrepreneurs are born or you can learn to be an entrepreneur? What do you think? We can learn. For me, half and a half. Okay, half and half. Why yeah, half and because half? You have to, because you have to have a one main setting in your mind. And then... Uh, uh, you have to learn how to invest because if you, you don't learn how to invest, maybe you will lose the, your money. So that's near, uh, That's why I said half and half. Okay, very good. Interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody else is worth saying something. Uh, hi, any other? Uh, I think... They have the the motivation, the vision, and the university environment give them the opportunity to meet another people like the Mark Zuckerberg. He invited ten of her partners to be part of Facebook and six uh, dropped out, six say no, and four of them say yes. And that seas are uh, very, very sad now because they don't want to be part of that. And, uh, the same is for Bill Gates. Bill Gates uh, went to the university and the, in the university they know a guy that created a, a computer program. That they buy, buy it by, by $100, I think. And uh, he thinks that he can do something with with that, and Steve Jobs says that uh, they learn in the university about the type of letter, and as uh, they they went eighteen months uh, to the university, and they learn, all of they learn all of the he learned in the university helped him to to do his job. Okay, yeah, actually. Uh... That is a, a good approach. I mean, every story is different, right? Um, yes, I believe that, uh, as Jose Wilfredo said, that maybe it's half and half. Not half and half, but, I mean, you can be, you can learn how to be an entrepreneur. If you really want to have your own business, yeah, you can do it. And I do believe that these people, like Steve Jobs, Mark Supercover, Larry Ellison, they were born like that. I mean, that was like an exception. There are people that are exceptional, right? That they have a vision and they fight for that one. I mean, and they accomplish that one and it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. So a very good example is what David was saying about uh, Steve Jobs. I mean, he was fired from his own company. He succeeded in another company, but he didn't want that one. He wanted the other one that was his baby, right? So he returned to that one and he did what he had in mind. So... There are exceptions, and that happens, I mean, everywhere in the world. I mean, people here in, in El Salvador, they don't go to, to school, and they have very nice business. They run very good businesses, and they have, I mean, not millionaires, but they, they have money, right? So they can travel. They have many cars, things, and that one. So that happens in every country. Jose Wilfredo, you were going to say something. No, not sure, no. 
Okay, perfect. Very good. So yeah, uh, I mean, that is something that happens sometimes. So maybe if you have a very good idea and you are passionate about that one, that, that can happen to you. That is the first step. Okay, next one says consume content across multiple channels. Ah, that is a good one. This is going to be for Roxana Yves. Doesn't content across multiple channels as important. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, as important. Are you okay? Uh, maybe you cannot read because you're sick. Uh, I, it's okay. Uh, okay. I don't know if you can hear me. But yeah, no. we can hear you. Yeah, we can okay. hear you. As important as build, as building a driver, a diverse skill set is. Uh, the need to consume a uh, diverse array of content is equally so. This content can be in the form of podcasts, books, articles, of le lectures. The important thing is that the content, no matter the channel, should be varied in what it covers. And spring entrepreneurs show always fam familiar familiarize 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 thank you familiarize themselves with the world around them so they can look at industries with a fresh perspective. Give them the ability to build a business around a specific sectors. Good, what did you get from this one, Roxanne? Uh, well, in general, uh, we have uh, different uh, forms to layer and share information. In that case, uh, entrepreneurs can um, feed the ideas or feed the, the the companies different different channels that like podcasts, book articles, or different ways. The thing is, try to show the product or the service to the rest of the world in different ways, and not only in um, maybe in a TV. You know, when you are uh, watching TV, you can uh, get some advice or when you are uh, listening the radio, you can uh, hear some advices, but you 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 can use another uh, ways like, like that. Okay, very good. So this is a very important thing. I mean, you can get information and you can provide information in different channels. So you need to, to know depending on the sector and the business that you are going to have, you need to know how you are going to have that communication in the market with customers, with companies that are going to be related with you, like providers or some other things. Uh, so definitely this is something very, very important. Good. Next one, identify a problem to solve. Oh, this is very, very important. For me, it's one of the most important. And this is going to be for William Alexander. Not possible. Jarvin Isaac. Not possible. Uh, David Samuel. Okay, teacher. But uh, I, I, I want to talk something about the previous, the previous slide because I, I think clarify many things. Because uh, even though you don't have a formal education, uh, a mayorship of, of something, but you need to be uh, a learner. Uh, that is that is the name for self-made. You need to learn uh, uh, many things. You need to read, hear podcasts, and many things to be prepared. You can go into business. Uh, now with nothing, you need to know and uh, you need preparation, formal or informal, but you need. 
and uh, notice for that company that uh, in 10 minutes, <laughs> in 10 minutes you can do a business. No, 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 it, it needs preparation in uh, every way. Okay, go to this one. Identify a problem to solve through the consumption of content across multiple channels, that is the past. An aspiring entrepreneur is able to identify various problems to solve. It is a key. One business address pain point, either for another business or for a consumer group. Through the identification of a problem, an aspiring entrepreneur is able to build a business around solving the problem. It's important to combine steps, three or four, so it is possible to identify a problem to solve by looking at various industry as an outsider. This often provides an aspiring entrepreneur with the ability to see a problem others might not. Hey, what do you get from this one? I, I see what, uh, what you say is, this is the key. You need to solve a need. Uh, I, in the past, maybe I, I always seen it, the people or in the guy that uh, create this little bath of sugar or little bath of, of salt. When I was a kid, you go to the store and buy the, the pound of sugar. I never, I, I never realized that somebody can buy a, a tiny, a tiny bag of sugar. But <laughs> there is a need. Somebody see the need and invent that. That, that is so important. And uh, we need to see in the eyes of the consumer what the people need, what the people need. As you say in the past, you go to a company, you go to a store, and they don't have or they don't give you the, the attention that you need. Like the founder of Starbucks, uh, he says they don't sell coffee. They say identity to the people. And for the reason when you go to the Starbucks, uh, they ask, what's your name? Uh, somebody made jokes and, and give uh, some kind of, but the, the guy in, in the store put a name and then called you by your name. And uh, for the people, uh, his name or her name is the most important sound in the world. Uh, and, uh, for that reason, the Starbucks says, I. We don't sell coffee. We sell identity. And the same way for Coca-Cola. We don't sell refreshment. We sell happiness. And uh, the, that is, uh, uh, they identify. Uh, what is so successful Coca-Cola? Because they are not selling for refreshment. They are selling something that the people need to be happy. Very good. So, yes, I believe if you are an entrepreneur and you have an idea, that idea, that product, that service has to be linked to this, what you are going to offer, what need you are going to solve, right? So definitely this is, this is key. Uh, I mean, it's not possible to sell something. It's not going to provide anything to a customer. So... This is something that we need to check. And there are people, I mean, there are entrepreneurs that they are looking for ideas. They are always hunting, right? What can I do? What can I do so I can create something very nice? Sure tank. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there are people that they are hunting things there. So that is a, a nice thing that we have compliment for everybody, I guess. <laughs> yes. Good. The next one says solve that problem. So you identify that is the first part only. I have this need. Everybody has this need. How can I do this one? And then 
then you have to materialize that one. Jose Wilfred is going to read this one. Okay, sure. Solve that problem. Successful startups solve a specific pain point for another company or for the public. This is known as adding value within the problem. Only through adding value to a specific problem or pain point doesn't an entrepreneur become a successful. Say, for example, you identify the process for making a dentist appointment is complete complicated for the patient and dentists are losing customer as a result. The value could be to build an online appointment system that makes it easier to book appointments. Good. What do you um, get this? Well, this is maybe um, not so much indirect, but uh, you could say this like take advantage of the problem of the other people maybe something like that because uh, you see the necessity and you have to solve that necessity to to be a, a good interpreter uh, because like that you can sell you can sell your idea and that is that is why uh, you're taking advantage of the of the pain of the others. Okay, that that is true. Actually, that happens. I mean, I believe the most of the pros they they were born like that one. I mean, yeah, toilet paper in my in my <laughs> life before that. <laughs> I mean, probably there was a way, but now yeah. somebody said. We we can do this right. We can, I mean, create that one. Or or mind the the razors for you to shave. Um, I don't know. There are the many. shampoos and soap for the yeah. body. So. so all the products that we have, including this computer, the headsets, the yeah. uh, internet. Somebody saw a need, and they yeah. say, "Well, okay, I can do that one." But the problem is that one. So identify the need. Mm -hmm. I believe it's kind of easy. But solve that problem, that is another thing. Right? Yeah. So, for example, in my, in my in this, we have a problem in El Salvador, in San Salvador, let's say. This is a huge problem that is about traffic. Traffic is a nightmare in San Salvador. It's a need there. What would you do to solve that problem? What ideas do you come to to your mind so you can solve that problem? Uh, I think we need to improve the uh, public transportation and uh, we need to rescue the old train. I don't know why trains go out in, in our, uh, in all of Central America, I think. If you go to Europe, the train is the main uh, uh, way of transportation. You can go all of Europe by train, by train. But here we lose the trains and the trains can uh, go faster now and can go for the part of the country that are no houses. Uh, uh, here is maybe something impossible, but I think it could be done. In in uh, in uh, uh, another uh, situation is uh, maybe work with the with the schedule the schedules in the in the in the country and the last one is to to put uh, all of the things that the people need in every in every city because if somebody needs to study. They need to come to San Salvador because uh, they can study some some uh, subjects in Santa Ana, in Chalatenango, in San Vicente, San San Miguel. But it's not all. They need to come to San Salvador, and uh, if you need to do something, you need to come to San Salvador. And uh, for that reason, I. Have, you see the the street of uh, Santa Ana, San Miguel, 
coming and coming and coming and coming to, to San Salvador. Not only the people from San Salvador, but all of the country need to come to San Salvador to do things. Yeah, everything is centralized, right? And yes. uh, yeah, there are, I mean, I believe some of the uh, solutions that you provide are nice. Some of those are expensive. The schedule, I believe, maybe it won't be popular. Uh, but there are solutions, right? I believe uh, there are things that we can do. Um, right now, they are the government is building different things. For example, you know, Pico, you know, they build this uh, traffic and this level. But I travel to Santana, and every time that I travel, it's like, I mean, they move the the traffic jam from here to there. That's the only yes. thing that they did. I, mean, I translated. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That's not a solution. It's nice there and the place where you go up and, and maybe the people that goes to Opico or, or the other side, they are very nice. But Santa Ana is a nightmare. I mean, the traffic is still there. So there was no solution. So sometimes identify the problem is it's kind of easier. All right. We have this need. Solve the problem. Oh, that is the real thing, right? Because we need to find a way that makes everybody happy, that in companies make profits. I mean, that is the real thing, right? Good. Any other idea for the traffic in San Salvador? <laughs> Use bikes. Yes. Uh, yeah, back, that's cool. Come back Use bikes. Home office. Um, uh, home up. That is something that I would like. Yeah, home office. So if if the companies, I mean, you don't have to be there in front of the desk speaking with your customers and you can do your job at home. I believe that would be a very good solution. That I believe, and it's, it's not that expensive. Maybe the government can say, okay, I'm going to reduce the taxes for the companies that are going to do this. And I believe many companies will say, okay, let's take advantage of this one. Do you have a computer at home? Go to home and, and do that one. So that is that is something interesting. And I mean, we can say many things, right? But yeah, it's, it's a big problem because some, some families, they have two or three cars. Uh, we really like to have things. So that is another problem. So I was reading that, I don't remember where it was, was in... Uh, a, a place in Europe, Sweden or something like that, that they reduce the traffic and the uh, pollution by using bikes. But I, I mean, here it's very dangerous to go by bike, right? Also, it's very tired because a lot of streets, they do have to go up or, or down. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not something that you're going to do from, I mean... It, one day to another. So there are a lot of solutions, but there are some things that are going to stop you there. So but there are bikes and an engine. Yeah, I mean so the, the government should increase that one, right? So you can go and move in that way. So it could be it could be a solution. Uh anyways, let's see what happens. Let's see. Uh, one of the questions I ask myself is how is going to be in 10 years? Remind that. If we are That's like going that, to be in 10 years. Okay. Yeah. That, that is yeah, going to I, have, I have an idea. Go ahead. Uh, I think that one one problem is for the traffic is that all companies have central office in the same place. For example, I work in Les Calon and you can find all companies, uh, uh, a lot of uh, building with central office, for example, uh, Banco Agricola, La Vivienda, etc. So in the same place has a lot of office. So the traffic is very complicated around El Salvador del Mundo. So maybe if uh, the government apply a politics for that, so or are not just a company uh, that they have uh, your central office in other department or in other cities. I don't know. Maybe it could be a good idea. Okay.
Okay, very good. So yeah, there are many things that we can come up, right? So um, what is going to work? We, to be honest with you, we don't know. Uh, in other countries, sometimes, for example, they say uh, the cars with, uh, I mean, some cars are going to uh, go out on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays and the other ones on the other days. I believe that is not popular. It's a solution, but maybe it's not popular. You have your car, but you cannot take your car out today. So that that is not good, right? There are many things that and you we buy might another say. car. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I believe people will do that one, right? I will have two cars, but I need something that is different from the other one so I can move myself every day. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there are many things that we can say, but uh, well, I would like to. I would like to see about that. Okay, network like crazy. That is something that is also very, very important. Uh, let's see. Uh, Giselle. Okay, teacher, network like crazy. Most entrepreneurs can't do it alone. The business world is a, cut, a cutthroat. One, and getting any help, you can will always help and reduce the time it takes to achieve a su successful business. Networking is critical for any new entrepreneur, meeting the right people that can introduce you to contacts in your industry such as the right suppliers, financiers, and even mentors can be the difference between success and failure. Attending conferences, emailing, and calling people in the industry, speaking to your cousin's friend's brother, to your cousin's friend's brother, who is in, in a similar business, will help you get out into the world and discover people that can guide you. Once you have your foot in the door with the right people, conducting Conducting a business becomes a lot easier. Good. What did you get from this? That you have to, to take advantage of your contacts. So you can you can learn a lot of a lot of people. So if you have like the like the right support or you are surrounded by people that knows and have experience experience uh, in the area or in the in the business that you that you want to to start at the end that will be that will be better for you because uh, like that like the father sets at the end that that becomes a lot easier because you are not alone you are uh, with people that support you and have your back and you can learn the people like that maybe wants to, to teach and have a lot of knowledge about the business that you want to, to start. Very good, perfect. So this is something that is very, very important, not only for an entrepreneur. I believe that anybody in any position, in any company, yeah, you need to know, right? You need to know the right people in the right apartments so you can learn the way that you need to do or uh, who you need to talk with if you need help. I mean, uh, to learn many things. And of course, for entrepreneurship, this is a must. So you need to know companies, I mean, contacts in the government, I mean, many things. Anything you can, you can improve by knowing people, the right person, so they can help you out. Good. I have a question here. What it says the business world is a cutthroat. What is a cutthroat? Anybody? You lost your throat. <laughs> oh my god. They could like we say in Spanish. Uh, uh, it's uh, something like uh, put you away if you are not uh, careful. Yeah, that is it. I mean, the business world is. I mean, you see that there are companies that they they close. I mean, multi-million companies, they sometimes, they lose everything. So if you don't do the right things, I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to be successful for you. You need to be careful on that one. So it's dangerous. It's, 
I don't know. It's it's very risky. It's it's like a jungle. Sometimes teacher could be mean also because if you see that these these program the Shark Tank, the invest the investors just they just tell the people this this is not right. This is trash. This is so the people that have the power when you want to 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 gain their favor, for example, that you want their money, but if they think that your idea it's not enough and it's not just just not a good idea, they just tell you that this is this is not gonna work, and I don't want to give you my money because for me it's not enough. So the business world could be mean sometimes too. And that is so true. I mean, and in the business world, you are going to listen to that a lot, right? They they are going to say your idea is. Stupid. They say words like that one. This is not going to work. Go and get a job. Or things like that one, right? So it's, it's, it's something like that. So you need to be prepared. Of course, on Friday, on the practice of English, we are not going to do that one, right? Because this is just for English. But in the real world, in the business world, I mean, that is, I mean, it's crazy. And that is one of the reasons why people, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I sometimes have very nice idea and I say, no, I, I'm fine where I am. I get enough money. I'm happy. I don't know. It's better for me to, to stop thinking about these things. So that happens. That is it because it's not just getting the money. It's not just running the business. It's staying alive. For example, you heard that the Silicon Valley bank has bankruptcy right so bankruptcy, yes how is that possible to say of course bad decisions right uh, people they the people that are on the top the top bananas they have money and they want more money for them that is the real thing and they do they make decisions that are not the correct ones and at the end uh, they risk the money that People have there, they have trust in them. And that, well, nowadays, as in the pandemic happens, nowadays everything is connected, right? All the other banks, all the uh, Wall Street thing, and also in Europe, uh, all uh, this market fell down. I mean, everything is connected. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a big problem. So we are not alone. <laughs> Even when we don't want to speak with the rest of the world, the rest of the world is connected to you. So that is something that happens. Good, good. So do you have any question? No. Sometimes we speak, we have an idea and we speak with friends or with people that know nothing about that. And uh, they have a, a good feeling for us, but they don't have the right information. And for the reason, we lost interest and we didn't try something. And uh, the advice is to look for the people who know about that thing and look for the advice or look for seminars or look for books or look for the preparation of the people who knows what is the topic we are trying to do and uh, learn from them. That is true. I believe it doesn't matter where you are or what you want to do. Research is a very, very important thing in life. I mean, sometimes research about anything. I mean, you can research about why this is like this. I mean, and that helps you whenever you have a really good idea or, or a problem that you want to solve, uh, to solve it. So if you research and you research well, because nowadays a lot of information over the internet is not good. So you need to have the sense uh, of knowing which one is, is the real thing and which one is not. So research is key, definitely. Perfect, my friend. So we're going to check the attendance and then I know that you are sleepy, so you have to go to bed. So the one one of today is for Dora Elizabeth. Let's check. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. 
Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Luis Albert T. Bonilla Canales. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. And Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a good rest. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Good night to everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Hello, Dora. How are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. Nice, nice to see you again. Yes. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> for me, it's, it's great to our teacher again. <laughs> I'm very happy as well to be your teacher again. That's very nice. Very nice, yes. yes. Good. So the first question I have for you is, uh, do you think that you are moving on, that you are learning? Yes, I'm learning. That's uh, very good, huh? I'm learning and, and I try to learn this in, in, in the other books and in, in te on television programs on English, only English, but I, li I like by I, I understand so much. That is very good. You have improved. I have seen that one that right now you speak fluent and it's very nice. That, that's yes. very good. Yes. <laughs> good. Do you have any question and any topic that we have checked in, in this module or in other modules? Uh, no, for this moment, no. No. Everything is fine. Very good. So you say that you are practicing. It's very good that you continue practicing. Um, remember that whenever we finish uh, the course, I mean, you can continue practicing on your own, right? Maybe not the two hours of the class, but if you watch something or read something or listen to something, that is going to help you improve. Yes. I, my, I, I, my change is uh, learn English, learn books in English. Very good. What kind of books would you like to read? Uh, I I have I well my boss is now is living in Canada and mm -hmm. they live left uh, oh many books in in English in in the office and so I try to to learn so <laughs> very good. That is a very good thing that you have the resources. If you, and... if you write a, a, a book in English, you you can visit the office and you choose the song book. That is a very good thing that you have the resources there and you can use them. So that is a very nice thing. Okay. So it's very important that whenever you see a word that is a new word, uh, try to understand it and also check the pronunciation. That is a very good tip. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, mm -hmm. and also remember that if you have questions, you can chat in the group, you can ask me here in the class, or you can chat with me directly. And of course, it will be a pleasure to help you out. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. Very good, perfect. So it was a pleasure to be with you. See you tomorrow and have a good night. Good night, teacher. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye-bye.